Hey guys, it's Mario from PilotEffect.com and I am here to answer a quick question. Do you need to be good at math to become a pilot? Well, pilots do math. It's part of our job. We have various calculations that we might do. For example, uh, we might calculate when do we start our descent from cruise flight for the approach. Uh, we use calculations for weight and balance considerations. We also calculate uh, how much time our trip is going to take based on distance and ground speed. We could use our calculation to judge how much fuel a trip is going to take. Uh, so let's do an example. Uh, let's do a fuel calculation. So how much fuel is my trip going to take? So let's say we have a certain fuel burn, uh, 50 units of fuel per hour. And we're going to be flying for an hour and 38 minutes. So how much fuel is going to be used? Well, if we're burning 50 uh, units of fuel per hour, we don't know how much fuel we're going to use, but we know how much time we're flying for, so an hour and 38 minutes. So we got to take that uh, 38 minutes and change it into a decimal. So we would go 38 divided by 60, which ends up being 0.6333333. Uh, so we'll just round it or cut off some decimals there. An hour or 1.63 hours is how much we are going to fly for. So we take our fuel burn, our 50 uh, units per hour times 1.63, and that will give us how much fuel we're going to use. So 81.5 units of fuel. Uh, now, I actually have notes on the side of the computer here, so I didn't do that math in my head. I sort of pre-calculated. Uh, but that's just to give you an idea of the kind of math you can expect. Now, other types of math that pilots do are wind triangles. So what a wind triangle is, is used for calculating crosswind components and headwind components. Uh, this is used for navigation purposes uh, and considerations on takeoff and landings. Uh, this leads into trigonometry, which is an aspect of math that a pilot might be involved in. Now, the trigonometry has to do with cosine and sine. You might have heard of that in school, uh, and it can be overwhelming and maybe intimidating. The nice thing about the wind triangle is most flight computers uh, will do the wind calculation for you. So, for example, here I have an E6B. The E6B does the wind triangle, and you don't have to bother with the actual trigonometry itself. Same with um, the CX2, the one that I have here. This one will do the uh, wind triangle calculation without having to mess with trigonometry as well. And of course, uh, Pilot Effect offers a flight calculator app which does the wind triangle calculation for you as well. And this is free. Uh, for Android and iOS, links at piloteffect.com. Uh, the nice thing about the uh, E6B and the CX2 is, uh, or most flight calculators, is that they are permitted for written exams and the actual flight test itself. So you can use those, and that's a really handy way of doing uh, the wind triangle without having to deal with trigonometry. Another aspect of math that you might have to deal with as a pilot is interpolation. So what interpolation is, is figuring out a value between two other values that are in sequence. So for example, let's say we have a chart and it gives you various columns on data for takeoff distance. So we have a column for 10 degrees Celsius and we have another column for 20 degrees. Now let's say we need information for 15 degrees Celsius. Well, this chart doesn't have a column for that. So what we need to do is take the data from the 10 degrees column and the data from the 20 degrees column and interpolate it to come up with stuff for 15 degrees Celsius. It's actually very straightforward once you actually know how to do it. So that's actually not so bad. Another aspect of uh, math that you might have to deal with is reading graphs. Um, and that's very straightforward, but it is sort of math orientated, but that's pretty easy. So nothing to concern yourself with that. Another aspect of flying would be mental math. When I'm flying along, sometimes I need to figure out the reciprocal heading of something. So I might go 70 plus 180 to figure out that. Uh, the mental math aspect is something that you just get better at the more you do. And of course, if you really need to, you could pull out a calculator in flight and do it that way. Uh, so to answer the question from the beginning of the video, do you need to be good at math to become a pilot? And the answer is no, absolutely not. Uh, you need to have a basic understanding of math, but you don't necessarily need to be good at it. And as you progress through your training, you can learn the specifics of math that are required for being a pilot. 
as you go through. And you can even do that throughout your career uh, as required. So hopefully you found this video helpful and answered that question. Anything that I talked about in this video is linked in the description. Um, and check out piloteffect.com. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching. See ya.